Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Whoa. Well, I want to thank everybody. This is a fantastic state. This is a great, great state. You know, we won New Hampshire three times now. Three. three. We win it every time. We win the primary. We win the generals. We've won it. And it's a very, very special place to me. It's very important. If you remember, in 2016, we came here and we needed that win. And we won by 21 points. And it was great. And uh, today, I have to tell you, it was very interesting because I said, wow, what a great victory. But then somebody ran up to the stage all dressed up nicely <laughs> when it was at 7. But now I just walked up and it's at 14. But, but she ran up when it was 7. And, you know, we have to do what's good for our party. And she was up and I said, wow, she's doing uh, like a speech like she won. She didn't win. She lost. And, you know, last, last week, we had a little bit of a problem. And if you remember, Ron was very upset because she ran up and she pretended she won Iowa. And I looked around. I said, didn't she come in third? Yeah, she came in third. And then I looked at the polls. She was talking about most winnability, who's going to win. And I had one put up. I don't know if you see it, but I have one put up. We've won almost every single poll in the last three months against Crooked Joe Biden. Almost every poll. And she doesn't win those polls. And she doesn't win those. This is not your typical victory speech, but let's not have somebody take a victory when she had a very bad night. She had a very bad night. And you, uh, you have the... You have the very, the now very unpopular governor of this state. This guy, he's got to be on something. I've never seen anybody with energy. He's like a uh, hopscotch. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm watching this guy, and two weeks ago, he said, we're going to win, we're going to win in the land side. We're going to win. About three days ago, he started saying, well, we want to do well. That's a big difference. But I walked out just now, we're 14 points up, and I don't know what it's going to be. But when she was up here, it was like six or seven. And, you know, with like 7% of the vote counted. Now, uh, let, let me just tell you, we, uh, we had an unbelievable week last week in Iowa. We set a record. It was the best in the history of the caucus, in the history. And uh, I remember I sort of had the same feeling. I'm up and I'm watching, and I said, she's taking a victory lap. And we, we beat her so badly, she was, but, Ron beat her also. You know, Ron came in second, and he left. She came in third, and she's still hanging around. The other thing, she only got 25% of the Republican votes. I don't know if you saw that. Tremendous numbers of independents came out, because in this state, because you have a governor that doesn't frankly know what the hell he's doing, in this state, in the Republican primary, they accept Democrats to vote. In fact, I think they had 4,000 Democrats, Democrats before October 6th. They already voted. Now, they're only voting because they want to make me look as bad as possible. Because if you remember, we won in 2016. And if you really remember, and if you want to play it straight, we also won in 2020. Yeah. By more. And we did much better in 2020 than we did in 2016. But as they said, we lost by a whisker, just by a whisker. No, no, no. But we can't let that happen. You know, you have to have people that speak up. I said, I can go up and I can say to everybody, oh, thank you for the victory. It's wonderful. It's what or I can go up and say, who the hell was the imposter that went up on the stage before? and, like, claimed a victory. She did very poorly, actually. She had to win. The governor said, she's going to win, she's going to win, she's going to win. Then she, she failed badly. Now, I have here, if he promises to do, to do it in a minute or less, but the only person more angry than, let's say, me, but I don't get too angry, I get even,